Back in 2013, I was absolutely addicted to survival games, and honestly, you can't really blame me because so is everybody else. Within the span of a few years, we had The Long Dark, Stranded Deep, Rust, Reign of Kings, Subnautica, The Forest, and like a thousand other survival games. So, it's not surprising that everybody and their mother was addicted to them. But out of all of the thousands of potential options of games I could play, the one that sat near the bottom of my list for a long time was The Long Dark. This game just did not look appealing to me, and it looked like something I would play if I wanted to go to sleep. Why would I want to survive against the weather? That seems like the most boring thing to survive against. I do that every single summer in Florida when we get pounded by hurricanes. So of course, as you can assume, I never played it, and the biggest interaction I had with the game was watching a few episodes of a playthrough by Splattercat Gaming. But again, other than that, I didn't play it whatsoever. And that was the case all the way up until 2020, when during the Steam Summer Sale, I was looking for a survival game to play, and I figured, eh, it's $8, why not give it a shot? And honestly, I am glad that I did, because as of right now, The Long Dark is my favorite single-player survival game I've ever played, even beating out Stranded Deep and Subnautica, which is saying quite a bit. So why is this game where you survive against some snow such a good game, and why does it deserve an entire video? Well, don't you worry my friend, because I'm going to be talking about exactly that in today's video discussing why The Long Dark is so freaking awesome. So let's start out by talking about what this game is about. Basically, the backstory is that there was a harsh geomagnetic storm that fried all of the electronics in the world, or at least in the region. And with the region being northern Canada in the middle of winter, as you assume, it gets pretty damn cold, and without technology or heaters or any of that garbage, basically everybody died except for you, and it is your goal to survive and to, I guess, make it out, but you don't really ever leave, so you don't make it out meaning your goal is merely to survive. Now, on the surface, a goal of just surviving sounds pretty damn boring, with most other games having long-term goals like, oh, let's kill the Ender Dragon, or oh, let's do this, or let's do that, or let's find my son. So it does kind of seem boring on the surface, but I promise you, once you dive into this game, the core gameplay is absolutely amazing. But anyways, you have to try to scavenge enough materials and resources to make it to the next day. Meaning, instead of having a long-term goal, you gotta look at it in a day-by-day -day perspective and just try to make it through that moment. There's no base building, so you're not gonna get comfortable at any time. There's always a bit of uncertainty and question as to if you're gonna make it. And you can't just hoard materials because your weight is managed depending on your circumstances and depending on what you're wearing. Meaning, let's say you break your ankle, you're gonna have a much harder time carrying weight and the amount of stuff you're gonna be able to carry is gonna go down quite a bit. And throughout all of this, you have to fight against wolves, bears, and all types of other animals, including moose. I say that for a reason, the moose always kill me. So you have to avoid these animals, avoid hurting yourself, make sure you have enough materials, all while traveling between the 10 different regions of the map. Basically, you have to make the best out of a very bad situation. Okay, so now that you understand how the game works, let's get into the nitty gritty. Going off of what I just mentioned, there are 10 regions in this game, with an 11th coming in December of 2020. The regions range in difficulty from beginner to advanced, and some of them are pretty damn hard. You get to choose which one you want to start out in, and each of them is completely different with completely different advantages and disadvantages. Coastal Highway is one of my favorites out of the ones that I've played, and it has a nice balance with a big open lake in the middle and places to explore around the edges. The maps are really well designed, and I could talk about them for quite a while, but I'd rather start out by getting into the beauty of the gameplay. The first thing that makes The Long Dark so awesome is that it has some of the best and most intentional game design that I've ever seen in a survival game. There's no pointless character customization, no plethora of customizable weapons, no base building, none of that garbage. And honestly, a lot of people are probably going to look at that and be like, oh, that looks boring, I'd rather have more mechanics in my game. But one of the things that makes The Long Dark so awesome is the fact that it's simple and that it isn't filled to the brim with a bunch of features that make the game feel diluted. If you could simply build a base in the woods and farm a lot of materials, you know, building a bed and some fur rugs and electronic heating and automation, it kind of defeats the purpose of surviving alone in a cold Canadian winter. The simplicity of the game allows the developers to focus more on what actually matters, which is the core gameplay. Instead of adding on pointless gimmicks, they could really refine what the experience is like for the user. So as I said, the core gameplay in this game is very simple on the surface. But once you dive into it, it gets surprisingly more complex. 
As I vaguely mentioned before, you can develop specific weaknesses that negatively affect your gameplay. For example, let's say you're walking on uneven terrain with a lot of weight on your back. Well, guess what? You can easily sprain your ankle and it's going to make it even harder to commute around the world. If you spend six days inside, you can get cabin fever and you have to sleep outside before you can continue sleeping. You can get infections for not treating your wound, you can get headaches from drinking too much caffeine, hypothermia, broken ribs, and honestly, much, much more. From an outside perspective, I'd say that these things sound like chores. I mean, I even had a friend who said, why would I want to play a game where I have so much to keep up with? That sounds stressful. And on the surface, I could agree with what he says. It does make sense, that's why I didn't like Red Dead Redemption 2. There was just too much to manage and it was annoying. But one thing I will say is that the game is so simple that these things don't become a problem. If you had to focus on gathering materials and finding seeds to build a farm and all these other goals and objectives, you'd probably get stressed out when you add broken ankles and broken ribs on top of that. But because of the simplicity, it isn't that big of a deal and it ends up working out. As I said before, there's not really an end goal, so your goal is to basically avoid getting these negative things all while trying to advance your situation and make your life a little bit more comfortable. You can go between regions and locations on the map and loot houses, cars, and other structures. There's a few hundred items in this game, which is a surprisingly large amount, especially when you're carrying everything yourself. You need to find the balance between what you need back at your base, what you need to make it back to your base, and what you're going to need in the future. It's a delicate balance and it's honestly pretty hard to plan accordingly. Now I know you probably heard me say bases and you're probably thinking, Robocast, what are you talking about? You said there was no base building. And there is no base building. You can't craft building materials and fortify things or anything like that. If you want to find a nice cozy place to call home, however, you can. You can find some of these pre-existing structures and take them as they are. There's no customization and you're not going to make it any more comfortable, but if you want to live in an old abandoned gas station like I did, you definitely can. So within my lovely little gas station, I couldn't customize anything like I said, and I had to use the pre-existing storage containers and items in the base. I had to accept it for what it is. The most I could change was to place a lantern down where I could actually see at nighttime because as you could assume by the title, uh, this game is long and dark at nighttime. And honestly, the lack of customization is another thing that's a good thing because it adds to the feeling of uncertainty. If I could make my base my ideal HGTV dream home, I wouldn't feel so stressed when I start running out of food. It makes it feel like you're in a foreign environment instead of a nice comfortable one, and it adds to the entire experience and the feeling of uncertainty that's always present in this game. And even with that, you don't have to take up residence permanently in a base. In fact, the longer you stay in a single location, the more at risk you are. Honestly, I learned this the hard way. Um, since I based up in the middle of the map, I was pretty far from the next closest region, and as I slowly began to loot all of the houses around me, I started to realize that materials were getting harder and harder to come by. So I had to start going further and further away from my base to get what I needed, which ended up almost killing me. So if you want, you can become a nomad and travel with only the things on your back. That definitely works out if you have the materials and the resources to make it happen. And if you want to be hunted by wolves every 5 seconds. So now this brings me to my second point about what makes this game so awesome. The animals. So there's six animals in the game. There's bear, deer, rabbits, wolves, timber wolves, and my least favorite, moose. Honestly, if I die again to another moose, I'm going to move to Canada and single-handedly exterminate the entire moose population. I don't understand why these animals are more threatening to me than all of the other scary ones that I mentioned before. Anyways, the wolves in particular are a huge threat. They spawn in random locations, and some locations are better than others. Like my base. You know, they all love spawning at my base. I don't know why, I guess it's because I live there or something. But the wolves are smart. They'll stalk prey animals like rabbits and deer, and if they see a player, oh don't worry buddy, they're going to be stalking you too. When they get close enough to you, they'll sprint at you and make you want to quit playing the game and crawl up in a little ball and go to sleep. But they can sense players based on sight, sound, or smell, so if you're carrying raw meat on you, you're much more likely to be targeted by a wolf. And the best of all is that sometimes they travel in packs, so you better be prepared to kill them or try to scare them off with a flare and run inside, like I did. And then there's timber wolves, and these things are like a normal wolf times 100. 
They'll target you in an open structure, even if you're not in their line of sight. They'll wait outside of buildings for you until you come out. And they do these like weird drive-by style attacks where they sprint at you and then run away. And they're way tougher. They're honestly terrifying and you don't want to run into them. Then of course there's all the other animals I've mentioned, all of which pose a pretty serious threat to your survival. But it's a hidden one because they often sneak up on you when you least expect it. As you're exploring the amazing atmospheric world, struggling for survival, you get stomped by a moose. Wow. So you have to keep these things in the back of your head whenever you're surviving, and it's almost like an unseen threat that you never really know where it is, kind of like you're playing Phasmophobia. And while this may scare off the average Canadian explorer, not me. The Long Dark is one of the most atmospheric games I've ever played, which is another thing that makes it so damn awesome. When you play this game, you get truly immersed into the environment. There's no fancy HUD or quest markers that distract you from the environment, making it feel extremely realistic and making it feel like you're actually there, surviving in the Canadian winter. If you want to keep track of your surroundings, you're going to have to pay attention to landmarks because there's no digital map. You can draw one yourself, but even then, it's hard to identify where you are. If you want to eat or drink, you're going to have to do it in the middle of your adventures because there's no pausing the game to eat food. And best of all, The Long Dark has one of the most immersive soundtracks I've ever heard in my entire life. Honestly, I'd go as far to say that it's my second or third favorite indie game soundtrack of all time, besides The Flame in the Flood and Undertale. The subtle violins and cellos give off a feeling of complete and utter loneliness. Accompanied by the dark, windy winter nights and a crackling campfire, it'll make you feel like you are the one who's alone in the cold, and that you are the one struggling to survive. I swear to god that sometimes when I play this game, I can feel the cold in my fingertips, and I'm not even exaggerating. Building off of the immersion thing, another thing that makes it so good is the weather. Weather's another thing that a lot of games can't really seem to get right, where it just kind of randomly starts pouring down rain like somebody turned on a faucet, or thunder appears like it's a freaking spaceship entering the atmosphere. But in the long dark, you can kind of sense when the storms are coming. At first it gets really quiet and still, and then the wind starts picking up and branches start blowing out of the trees, and then you get colder, and eventually the blizzard comes, and you're stuck wherever you are with the hopes that you can make it out alive. The weather has a huge impact on the experience because when it's storming, it's also pretty damn hard to go outside and you gotta be careful with your resources. You can feel the precious minutes drifting by as you slowly realize that you're out of dog food to eat, and that you're out of firewood too, and that it's going to be kind of hard to make it through the night. It makes the finite supply of hours in the game even more demanding, and sometimes it's hard to manage everything. But time management is okay when you have a game that looks as amazing as this one. The nice stylized graphics in this game fit perfectly with everything that's going on. It's often breathtaking to see some of the sights around the world accompanied by this beautiful art style, and it makes exploring the world even more exciting. Lighting is pretty complicated, with fireplaces only lighting up a small portion of your room and torches only lighting up the direct area in front of you. The look of this game is another thing that helps to make it so awesome, and accompanied with everything else, it makes it an amazing game. So in conclusion, The Long Dark is one of the best single player survival games of all time. In this video, I'm mainly mentioning the survival mode, I didn't even touch on the story mode because honestly to me that feels like an entirely different game, and that's not what I'm referring to in this video. This game does have its flaws like every other game, but that isn't my point. Overall, I'd give it a 9 out of 10, and I have to say that it is quite a bit of fun. So if you could pick it up, you definitely should. Hinterland did an outstanding job with this game, and I'm a huge fan of their work. And I promise that if you give it a shot, you will be too. Anyways guys, that's going to be it for today's video, so I hope you all enjoyed. If you want to see more videos like this, drop a comment down below. I will see you guys next time, and peace.